we've been talking about banks and nbfcs and here's an occasion to talk about both actually the idfc bank shareholders meeting is scheduled to take place on the 3rd of september and the capital first shareholders meeting will be towards the end of september both these groups of shareholders are going to decide on the merger are going to vote on the merger uh, and by now we know all the details of the merger ahead of that we invite v vaidyanathan executive chairman of capital first to clarify some doubts or some issues on which shareholders uh, uh, will argue with themselves before they do the vote uh, uh, mr vaidyanathan thank you very much for joining us well uh, you know the first question that might occur to a shareholder is that capital first was retail you know uh, 90% and that gave you great uh, a great price you know you were at 900 before the the merger after the merger you're at what 650 now so you know why are you getting into institutional or wholesale what would you have to tell them i think this was one of the key concerns uh, you know shareholders had after we announced the merger and uh, i think it would be a valid concern because close to about 50000 crores of uh, infrastructure and wholesale book did exist at idfc bank uh, the fact is that as we progress the story forward over the next uh, uh, few years we believe that we can build back the retail business from say about 30000 crores on a combined basis of the two institutions all the way back to about 1 lakh crore over the next 5 years so this is not a projection this is not a um uh, a, a promise or anything like that but this is basically a, a question to address to shareholders as to what is the management thinking so from that point of view i put that number out the number 2 that's coming in my mind is that retail is a proportion of the book which will probably come down to 30% from 90% would actually be go back to about 65 to 70% over the next 5 years again so this is what we are thinking so this is not something that should bother shareholders at all the number 2 is that to the extent that the wholesale book exists there in idfc bank i think the management has done a very credible job of cleaning up the books and whatever residual is there it just appears that they'll clean into this quarter Uh, Mr. Vedi Nathan, good morning. What about competition? I mean, you know, this space has been growing very fast, but growing with some big players that are well entrenched in the market. How do you plan to sort of penetrate the market? Uh, first of all, we are in the lower ticket size of the market. Mm. We are not giving thousand, two thousand crore loans, which a large corporates have given. Now, as far as the lower ticket size of the market is concerned, you know, we have close to about say six million customers on our side alone. in fact 7 million customers as we speak now that's a big diversification now uh, we think that uh, this space is so large that even if more banks enter this space the sbis and the large public sector banks even the private sector banks this is just so large and i think therefore we should not really worry about who's taking what market share this is a story of under penetration this is a story of financialization this is a story of democratization of credit and that's a very very big story yeah mr vedanathan good morning in fact that was my next question because you know invariably you're always compared to bajaj finance uh, that you know and you've seen the kind of stunning growth uh, that bajaj finance has shown uh, and it's a business of, i mean of course now you know we go to chroma and we go to other places we, i i can see that you know that's uh, capital first uh, along with bajaj finance but uh, in terms of catching up or in terms of the, you know garnering some more market share uh, your thoughts on that uh, that is again a very big market in india mm-hmm. now uh, it's not just bajaj finance it's not just capital first of late we're seeing a large number of people entering into the consumer financing market but that story is expanding not because of the fact that uh, that market is growing it's also because the amount of ecosystem has dramatically changed in india you can go to a marketplace you can meet a customer you can get access to aadhar you can access to credit bureau you can get access to a number of databases you can do de- deduplication you can do that instantly so therefore with the ecosystem evolving i don't see any reason why that market whether for capital first for other players should not grow by anywhere about 30 20% year on year Okay. Well, let me come to once again your sh- the, uh, the shareholders thinking, especially IDFC Bank, uh, especially Capital First uh, shareholders. You have bought IDFC Bank banking license. It will give you li- uh, liabilities uh, uh, at four percent as Capital First. You are probably borrowing at seven eight percent. That would be the natural reason why anybody would want the bank license. But what is uh, IDFC Bank's? Uh, Uh, current account uh, and savings account deposits it's uh, it's about 6 7% so uh, you've not got what you want liabilities 
Uh, first of all, uh, nobody has bought anybody. It's a merger of two institutions. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, this is a very important question because if we say that we've got to grow the retail loan book to one lakh crores over the next five or six years, where is the liability is going to come from? Now, this again, just like we talked to the assets market, liability is a very big market. Let me give you the numbers. The current account market in India is close to 10 lakh crores. The savings account market in India is about 37 lakh crores. Yes. So together it's 47 lakh crores and growing at about 5% per year. That's a CASA market of India. Now on 47 lakh crores, can we not get 40,000 crores over the next five years? That's all we need to, to build a good CASA. None of the other PSU banks got it. It is still with uh, SBI, it is still with HDFC. You know, they've all been in the race for so long. DCB asked Murli Natarajan, he'll tell you liabilities have not come that easily. No. Do you, you know, you have, you, as you said, 7 million uh, uh, asset customers. Is it possible for you to translate them into liabilities? Many of them will, but that's not the only story. And in fact, that cannot be the only story. Digital cannot be the only story. We need branches. So we will intend to put out, say, 500, 600 branches for sure. And in fact, as the game plays out, even a thousand branches. So when you put out between 600 to 1000 branches and you provide payment solutions, it is inconceivable that you will not get CASA because CASA comes from payments. CASA comes from uh, the ability to, uh, to allow people to transact seamlessly. On that front, I must say, while IDFC Bank may not have got the numbers on CASA, they have developed an exceptional architecture on how this can be enabled. So basically, they've done all the plumbing work. We just have to scale it up. But you're talking about 1,000 branches, uh, incremental thou incrementally, right? 1,000 branches that you're going to add? Cumulatively. We're okay. talking of 600 to 1,000, actually. It's, okay. uh, you know, mm -hmm. let me say first phase, right now we're thinking of 600. Mm -hmm. That's what we planned the p &L for. But I'm not ruling out expand, taking the game up. Now, you might well argue, saying that why branches? Yeah, because, I mean, you know, branchless banking, mobile banking has picked up so much. So, don't well, you want to Well, if you go to a large bank in India, let me say 1,000 branches are table stakes. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, digital is a big story. We talked about how the ecosystem is changing with terms of you know, other enabled payment services and mobile and Jandan and all that, that is definitely changing, the ecosystem is changing. But that can't be the only game. Mm. So it's basically both the physical branch network of let me say 600 to 1000 branches and uh, a digital architecture. We believe together it's necessary. It's just not, it's not the digital alone. Mm. The last results of IDFC Bank were not flattering. Uh, they did well more because of a one-time gain, uh, some 81 crore. So will there be cost cuts if you're not going to concentrate on wholesale will there be you know while there will be hiring of one kind will there be firing of another kind uh, actually the way we should look at this is not about a quarter's result about what the core profit of idfc bank is or what capital first is uh, first of all capital first itself is carrying close to a, a, a monthly a quarterly run rate of 100 crores a year of core profits into the institution as far as idfc bank is concerned there, uh, we, we have to see when we put them together, what is the going opportunity? And that opportunity is not coming from this 80, 100 crore that they posted last quarter. It is coming from the fact that our uh, liabilities will get repriced. We are borrowing anywhere between 8.5 to 9 percent incrementally. Cost of funds of a bank is much lesser. Let me say about 7.3 percent as per their own records of the last quarter. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a significant saving. Number two, the lending <coughs> yield of the combined institution today uh, can go up by close to about 200 basis points over the next five years because the fact that capital first yield is close to about 16 to 17 percent. So that brings a game. So when you increase the yield, you reduce the cost, the margin will go up. So we should not worry about what this quarter's profit are. We should worry about what the profits will be, say, four quarters from now, 16 quarters from now, and say, 20 quarters from now. And that story will look really very, very good. Will there be a lot of cost cutting that you, you're going to implement? Uh, See, uh, for, us, for us to improve the cost, uh, that is a core profit, yes, cost is going to be an important factor. Mm -hmm. But what kind of costs? Is it people? That's not what we're thinking. Okay. Let me just say that most employees at the operating level management should feel absolutely comfortable mm -hmm. because we believe that's not the storyline here. The story is not cost cuts. The story is synergies. Mm -hmm. The story is leveraging. Okay. Leveraging on their balance sheet, leveraging on their branch network, and for them to leverage on uh, our kind of unique model that we built over the years. Okay, actually, let me come to ROE. That Ultimately, that's what your investors will want. Your ROE, that is capital first, was 16%.
Now, after the merger, I don't know what it comes down to. I guess low single digits. What can you promise by way of ROE and by when? Let me tell you what again. What we estimate the profits for the first year as as a takeoff year to be to be. And I, I, I caveat this by saying that these are estimates <coughs> and these are management estimates and these are not really guidances. But uh, let me just say that uh, our estimates for the first year are about 600 crores of profit. I believe that's a pretty good number to start a game with. Return on equity will come down from say 16% to probably say 4%. But I'm pretty confident as the branches roll out and as the merger strategy plays out, this four can continuously grow to 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, we believe such a story is playable over the years. And I believe at some stage, you talked the story, started the story by talking about in investors, uh, mm. you know, concern. Mm. Uh, we've seen the story play out at Capital First before. When mm -hmm. our return on equity moved from, say, uh, you know, 0% to 8% on a stable basis, the market re-rated us from one time book to three times book. Okay. I believe at some stage, market will recognize the story. All right, okay. Mr. Bajanathan, yes. thanks a lot uh, for joining us. We wish you all the very best exactly. for that kind of a re-rating yes. and that kind of a scaling up. Yes, uh, that, and this is a is action replay for you. And exactly. I must say, just for the benefit of people who are watching and particularly employees, that this can be done. Mm. And this is not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, my belief is that this is not a conjecture. There is a solid business model behind it. And I believe it can be done. You can watch the story over the years. Okay, Mr. Rajanathan. Thank Thanks you. a lot. All the best for that. Thank you. That's capital first. Before we take a break, uh, you know, just discuss that the market really is 